It's now 6 p.m., so let's start this uh, mid-year budget review of this uh, adjourned meeting of the City Council. And as far as roll call, uh, Councilmember Lopez is excused and the uh, remaining four members are present. And uh, with that, we'll get into, right into the workshop. And who wants to lead off? All right, Janet, it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City staff, members of the audience. Oops, don't have too many, but that's okay. Uh, tonight I'm here to present the fiscal year 2022-23 mid-year budget review. So first we're gonna start with a summary of the recommended changes to the fiscal year 2022-23 general fund appropriations budget. So the total requests this year were $1,795,769. The city manager recommended amount is $1,546,110, and we'll go into detail on those in the following slides. So there are no changes to city council department this year. For the city manager department, we have information technology services, maintenance office equipment. Uh, due to remodel of the city facilities and modifications to programming needs related to service delivery for programs throughout the city, additional funding is needed. Uh, request $10,000, city manager recommended $10,000. Administrative services, central services, maintenance, office equipment. Due to extraordinary maintenance requirements related to office equipment citywide, additional funding is requested. 15,000 is requested, 15,000 is recommended. For human services, recreation, community benefits. In March 2023, the Montclair Community Activities Commission will be meeting to consider requests for community-based charitable well-being, health, education, and safety services and submitting recommendations to the City Council for approval. In order to meet a growing community need for third-party collaborative services related to the preceding, community-based welfare assistance type services, the City Manager recommends increasing funding for the community benefits account, so we would like to increase it by $15,000. Police Department, Administration, Cellular Phone Expense. So in September of last year, the department's cellular phone carrier, Verizon, upgraded the department cellular service plan. This new plan has added benefits and features, including priority service and support. So they're getting additional service. There's additional funding that's needed to cover this plan. An additional 3,000 was requested. 3,000 is recommended. Also on the police department, support, support services overtime. With several vacancies in the department, there have been ongoing recruitments and pre-employment investigations that frequently require additional time and effort to accomplish. Support services also conducts pre-employment investigations for other city departments. This uh, requested increase of $9,000 can be accomplished through a transfer of funds from support services part-time wages. Investigations overtime. Due to the unpredictable nature of criminal activity, an increase to the initial appropriation is requested to ensure that there are enough funds to cover the cost of callouts and holdovers that are required to initiate and complete criminal investigations. The requested amount of $30,000 can be accomplished with a transfer of $30,000 from Uniform Patrol regular earnings. Uniform Patrol overtime. Due to several unfilled vacancies and patrol throughout the fiscal year, which require backfill to ensure minimum shift coverage is maintained, this account is overexpended. They're requesting an additional $466,000. This is being accomplished with a transfer of $266,000 from Uniform Patrol regular earnings and a transfer of $200,000 from Uniform Patrol overtime in the COPS alias grant fund. Uniform patrol gasoline, due to the increased cost of gasoline, it is requested to increase the initial appropriation to cover gasoline costs until the end of the fiscal year. They requested $60,000, the recommendation is $40,000. Uniform patrol diesel fuel. Based on current needs and to ensure enough funds are available to cover fuel costs until the end of the fiscal year, an increase is requested. $14,000 was requested, $14,000 is recommended. Uniform patrol maintenance, other equipment. Annual maintenance of the firearms range ventilation system is recommended by the manufacturer to ensure proper airflow and air filtration. The maintenance package includes, in part, replacement of all inlet air filters, tightening and inspecting all mechanical and electrical connections, lubricating and adjusting all dampers, replacement of blower dry belts, and inspection of sensors in the range for proper operation. So an increase of $4,450 is requested for these 
this maintenance and $4,450 is recommended. Communications part-time wages. After the fiscal year 22-23 budget was repaired, the department was um, allowed to hire three part-time dispatchers, one of which moved to full-time status in November 2022. An increase is requested to cover the cost of these part-time dispatchers. They're requesting $35,000. Their recommendation is $25,000, and that can be accomplished with a transfer from uniform patrol regular earnings. Communications overtime. Due to vacancies throughout the fiscal year, which require backfill to ensure minimum shift coverage is maintained, this account is now overexpended. The department hired one full-time dispatcher in August 2022 and two in November 2022, including the part-time dispatcher who moved to full-time status. It is anticipated that overtime usage will decrease due to these new hires. An increase is requested to cover the cost of overtime for the remainder of the fiscal year. They're requesting $30,000. I'm sorry, $30, $30,000 is recommended, but that will be accomplished through a transfer from Uniform Patrol regular earnings. Communication Special Contract Services. This account covers the cost of the department's contracts with language line services for foreign language translation for non-emergency over the phone interpretation services. An increase to the initial appropriation is requested to cover costs for the remainder of the fiscal year. The request is $3,000, recommended $3,000, and that will be um, paid out of the SB 509 public safety fund. So the total general fund impact of changes for the police department is $61,450. Fire department, emergency services overtime. Due to unfilled vacancies, medical leave and emergency callback, mandatory backfilling of key positions is required in order to prevent shortfalls in the fire department's minimum deployment levels. An increase is requested to cover the cost of overtime for the remainder of the fiscal year. The request was for $450,000. The recommendation is for $320,000. A portion of that $33,000 will be uh, handled with a transfer from Uniform Patrol regular earnings. Emergency services uniforms. Uniforms were purchased for recently hired firefighters and two more firefighters will need to be hired to fill current vacancies that will also need uniforms. In order to outfit current and new employees for the remainder of the fiscal year, an increase to the initial appropriation is requested. The request was for $10,000. The recommendation is zero. We feel that there's enough funds remaining in the budget at this point to cover the, the needs for the rest of the fiscal year. Emergency services, personnel protective equipment. The department currently has two vacancies. The cost to outfit one firefighter in personnel, personal protective gear is approximately $15,000. Each firefighter's turnouts are sized specifically for him, her, and along with cost increases and supply chain problems, the overall costs have increased substantially. The request for the increase is $80,000. The recommendation is $40,000. The fire department totals an increase, net increase of $327,000 to the general fund. Public Works Department, street maintenance overtime. Overtime funds were spent on standby, street emergencies, weed abatement, tree trimming, graffiti removal, and weekend trans center restroom cleaning. To complete two trans center cleanup days and weed abatement plus trans center restroom weekend cleaning and standby for the remainder of the fiscal year, additional funding is requested. $15,000 was requested, $15,000 is recommended. Street maintenance special contract services. The adjustment requested is to replenish this account due to extra work that Mariposa and West Coast Arborists have completed to date this fiscal year. Due to vandalism and city yard staffing levels, Mariposa was tasked with making the necessary irrigation repairs to all parks, civic center, and center medians. West Coast Arborist was also used for tree emergencies, tree trimming, stump removal, and tree planting. So additional funds of $47,430 were requested, $30,000 is recommended, and that will be out of the gas tax fund. Dining and painting overtime. The majority of the overtime funds were spent installing holiday decorations and flags. Chamber of Commerce banners will need to be installed this year and it is expected to take three days to complete. They're requesting an increase of $1,700. $1,700 is recommended. Street sweeping overtime. This account is overexpended due to the cleanup needed after the recent storms. They're requesting an additional $1,000. $1,000 is recommended. Park maintenance overtime. This account is overexpended due to weekend standby, after hours emergencies, trans center restroom cleaning, and ball field preparation. $17,659 was requested, $15,000 is recommended. 
irrigation maintenance, special contract services. Public Works does not have a maintenance worker with backflow certification. All black backflow work is performed by basic backflow. So they need an increase of $2,776. $2,776 is recommended. Vehicle maintenance, materials, transportation, and work equipment. The cost of parts has significantly increased with inflation. Costs for the remainder of the fiscal year include repair of a cylinder head on fire engine 151, repair of an emissions problem on fire engine 152, and miscellaneous parts to repair city vehicles. A $43,000 increase was requested, $43,000 increase is recommended. Vehicle maintenance gasoline. Due to the high cost of gasoline, an increase to the initial appropriation is requested. $23,000 was requested, $8,000 is recommended. Vehicle maintenance, oil, and lubricants. Additional funding is requested for the purchase of 200 gallons of 15 weight 40 mortar oil and one 55 gallon barrel of Valvoline Gen 2 motor oil for the street sweepers. And since we have a second street sweeper now, it's uh, taking additional um, uh, oil and lubricants. $2,000 is recommended. I'm sorry, $2,000 is requested. $2,000 is recommended. Vehicle maintenance compressed natural gas. Due to the increase of the price per gallon and the addition of a second CNG street sweeper, this account is overexpended. An increase of $16,000 is requested. $16,000 is recommended. Vehicle maintenance, maintenance, transportation, work equipment. For the remainder of the fiscal year, the following repairs are needed. Replacement of the transmission and dump truck unit 218, replacement of the hybrid batteries in units 104 and 106, and smog checks on 30 city vehicles. This, these repairs will exhaust the remaining budget in this account. Additional funding is requested to cover other outside maintenance and car washes. $5,000 is requested, $5,000 is recommended. City maintenance, I'm sorry, sewer maintenance, diesel. Due to the high cost of diesel, an increase to the initial appropriation is requested. $7,500 was requested, $7,500 is recommended, and that will be coming out of the sewer operating fund. Building maintenance over time. Due to operating the splash pad for the summer months, remodeling the police department shooting range, and remodeling, remediating City Hall, this account is overexpended. Additional funds are requested to cover the negative balance to operate the splash pad on weekends during the summer months and unforeseen emergencies. $18,184 is recommended. I'm sorry, requested $18,184 is recommended. This leaves a net increase to the general fund of $127,660 for the Public Works Department. Community development, plan check, plan check service. The size of projects since the city's consultant for structural plan review has increased. Additional funding of $35,000 is requested. $35,000 is recommended. City attorney. City Attorney Legal Services Court Costs. Due to extraordinary and ongoing legal expenditures related to claims against the city requiring use of outside legal counsel, additional funding is requested to cover costs for the remainder of the fiscal year. $40,000 is requested, $40,000 is recommended. City Attorney Special Legal Services. Due to extraordinary and ongoing legal expenditures related to claims against the city requiring additional participation from the city attorney and due to a contract rate adjustment for the city attorney, additional funding is requested. $15,000 is requested, $15,000 is recommended with a total of $55,000 for the city attorney. Citywide, personnel services, general liability claims. Due to unanticipated general liability claims, this account is overexpended and additional funding is requested to co cover the cost for the remainder of the fiscal year. $850,000 is requested, $850,000 is recommended. Services and supplies, electrical service. Due to the increased cost of electricity, additional funding is requested, $50,000 is requested, $50,000 is recommended for a total of $900,000 for the citywide department. Now we'll move on to the statement of general fund expenditures for the six month ending December 31st. So most departments are doing really well. Um, some are well under 50%, and we have a little few departments that are over 50%. Um, the highest departments, uh, city attorney is 71% expended, and citywide is 101% expended due to the uh, general liability claims. So overall with the city, we are 54% expended citywide. General fund revenue detail. 
So for the general fund taxes, we're suggesting an increase in revenue of $839,106. That is due mostly in part to a $500,000 increase in Measure L. Licenses and permits, we're suggesting, uh, recommending $207,000 increase. Uh, $200,000 of that is for building permits. Intergovernmental revenues, an increase of $90,000. Fines and forfeitures, an increase of $53,400. Charges for services, $187,000. And miscellaneous revenue, an increase of $71,000 with an overall general fund increase of $1,447,506. Now we'll do our general operating fund analysis. So revenue increases, we're anticipating $1,447,506. Our general fund expenditure increases are $1,546,110. So we have a deficiency of $98,604. Fiscal impact, revising the city's appropriations budget increases the spending authority by $1,546,110 in the general operating fund. Revising the city's estimated revenue budget has a total positive impact to the general operating fund of $1,447,506. Approval of both the appropriations and estimated revenue budgets would have a negative budgetary impact to the general operating fund of $98,604. A transfer from the unanticipated personnel adjustment reserve will fund this negative budgetary impact. Recommendation, staff recommends the city council consider the city's mid-year budget review documents and approve proposed changes to the fiscal year 2022-23 budget. And so now after discussion at last night's council meeting regarding the lease revenue bonds and where we stand, we decided to add a little overview uh, to tonight's presentation. So in November 2021, at a workshop, uh, the following potential projects were presented to City Council, which total 47.7 million. Uh, for Arrow Highway, we have streetscape project and design and utility undergrounding for a total of 2.7 million. Benson Avenue median and pavement rehab, 2.1 million. Mills Avenue, 3.8 million. Monte Vista Avenue, 4.6 million. Palo Verde Street, 1 million. Richton Street, 1 million. Huntington Drive Design, 100,000. Fremont Avenue Streetscape, 1 million. Marino Street Utility Undergrounding, 1.5 million. La Rambla Design, 100,000. Zone 2 Street Pavement Rehab, 510,000. San Antonio Creek Channel Trail Pilot Section, 1 million. Modular Restrooms at Trans Center, 250,000. Alleyway Improvements, Citywide, 3 million. Street Striping Program, Citywide, 450,000. Retro Reflective Signal Backplate Striping, Citywide, 75,000. Holt Boulevard Median and Pavement, 2.2 million. Mission Boulevard Median and Pavement, 2.8 million. Zone 5 and 6 Pavement Rehab, 4 million. Parks Master Plan, 250,000. Freedom Plaza, 100,000. Saratoga Park Improvements, 1.5 million. The total project cost is 3.5 million, but we have 2 million in Grant funding from the state. MacArthur Park Improvements, 1.15 million. Kingsley Park Improvements, 580,000. Essex Park Improvements, 1.16 million. Marina Vista Park Improvements, 875,000. Sunset Park Improvements, 600,000. Sunset Park Improve, I'm sorry, Sunrise Park Improvements, 675,000. Golden Girls Park Improvements, 465,000. Reader Ranch Fencing Improvements, 300,000. County Park Improvements, 300,000. The total project cost is 4.5 million, but we're trying to get additional funding, uh, grant funding to cover the remainder of that project. Fire Station 2 Landscape Improvements, 30,000. San Bernardino Street Screen Wall, 352,000. Police Department Handrail, 165,000. Public Parking Garage Design, 1 million. Safe Routes to School, 3.3 million. Local road safety program, 2.75 million. So the current uh, projects we have in progress that we have spent money on, safe routes to school, we've spent $31,261. That's for Vernon School Design and Signage. 
zone five and six street rehabilitation. This is nearing completion. It's just over 3.6 million. Civic Center standby generator. This is for the design and a portion of the generator, 60,948. Parks and Recreation Master Plan, 41,556. This is just for special consulting services at this point. Central Avenue Rehabilitation Phase Two, $3,490 toward the design. Sunset, Sunset Park, $14,120 for design. NMDSP and MPDSP Street Master Plan, $357,221 for design. Hope Boulevard Median and Street Rehabilitation, $33,442 for design. Mills Avenue Rehabilitation, $18,360 for design. And City Engineer Consultant Salary, $157,426. The following uh, projects have been completed. The Trans Center Restroom, $186,103. City Hall Monument Sign, 63,520. The Public Works Community Development Counter, 55,762. Fire Station 2 Landscaping, 52,145. And the Alleyway Improvement Project. <clears throat> and this uh, is the CDBG target area, so the, the bonds had to pick up what the CDBG funds didn't cover, which is that actually should be $145,277. I had a little typo there. And so some grant funding that we have that will help aid in the, uh, these, some of these projects, the Rita Ranch Park, 5.1 million, Sunset Park, 5.2 million, and Saratoga Park, 2 million. And city staff is pursuing additional grant funding in relation to park improvements and infrastructure projects. We should also mention we have $300,000 for the purchase of the generator for uh, yes, the Civic Center. Yes, that is correct. So for the 20. 20, 2021 lease revenue bonds, the issue amount was 45 million. We had an issue premium of just over 2.8 million. The expenses paid to date is just over 4.9 million. The remaining balance is just over 42.9 million. And additional project costs approved by council that are not included in, in the expenses paid to date is just over 4.1 million. That concludes my presentation. So anybody has any questions okay any uh, questions from us council Carissa the only thing that really caught my attention um, I have comments just you know how pleased I am but the only thing that caught my attention was for public works um, the overtime I lost the page I think it was 15 or 16 12 I'm sorry so it seems like the actual mid-year expenditures have already used uh, the current appropriation. They've exceeded the current appropriations budget. Is the reason because we now are well-staffed to avoid the overtime usage? Yes, yes. They've, okay. they've gotten more well-staffed with their maintenance workers. Uh, they're pretty close to fully staffed. They might have a couple that they still need to hire, but yes. Okay. Yeah, just with the um, spring season starting up and, and this weather. Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Denise? No? Bill? No? You, you, want, you, you guys want me to talk? <laughs> okay. Um, in the police and fire department, I, I, I'm going to ask a question about as far as st staffing levels, and I don't know if you have the answer to the question, but how many vacancies, vacancies do we have in police in terms of uh, police officers? Or I know it's the same question. Keep asking the chief over and over, but obviously a lot of, this, a lot of the overtime is being covered by savings and uniform salaries or uniform personnel cost. <clears throat> so we have uh, seven that are listed in the budget right now, but two that are in lieu positions. So that's that's the actual vacancies right now. The <clears throat> other issue is, is while, while some of the regular earnings is covering some of the overtime, we still do have some individuals that are in training either right. in the academy or in field training right. 
so they're not functioning as a regular officer, and that's going to cause us to incur additional overtime. Yeah, but we have seven openings right now, seven yes. open positions, fund positions. S seven that are funded in the budget, yes. Are open. Okay. Yes. All right. And how about the fire department? The fire department fire. is currently staffed with enough personnel, but there is a, um, a vacancy, well, one vacancy that just uh, occurred in the last month, and then another one that's... Uh, occurring on the 23rd of February. And so that, I think, might leave us one short. Okay. All right, then. Uh, and I take that back. There's one engineer uh, vacancy right now. So. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, and I'm assuming as far as the, the recruitment is going on for the engineer position? Uh, yeah. Recruitments are, are going on, but the uh, um, recruitment well has kind of dried up a little bit. Our last recruitment for firefighter only yielded two candidates, and our um, recruitment for the police department only yielded five, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So we have, that's a discussion we'll have to have as far as recruitments. So we we'll have to have, we need robots now, the <laughs> yeah. positions, basically. Yeah. I don't think that's happening just yet. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> kind of scary, but All right. um, I know it's, it's, it's uh, system wide. All right. Um, and then as far as the, um, and I appreciate staff. I didn't expect staff to put this into this uh, this meeting today. I was I thought maybe uh, I was okay with the uh, budget workshop in June, but I appreciate you putting that, uh, putting this in now. So um, I know I know that we spent five million dollars. Spent five million, yeah, four point nine million dollars expenditure to date. So as far as these projected projects on page uh, 27, 28, 29, and 30, we're still good to fund these projects based on these budgeted numbers? Well, we are, but as you can see, there's gonna be some variations, obviously. So for example, the uh, zone five uh, area is actually less than what we budgeted for here, but will it ultimately get to that amount? We'll, wait, we'll have to wait to see the project's completed. Some of these projects will not be completed, maybe because of a lack of time to complete them. Uh, so what does that mean at the end? Will we spend the entire 45 plus million dollars? It's hard to say at this moment. Okay. All right. Sounds good. As far as comments are concerned, um, it's a uh, very encouraging mid-year budget review with exception one item. And um, like I said, I think last June it was very encouraging, the budget we came up with uh, for this current fiscal year. So um, um, I've seen a lot worse, right, Ed? Certainly had a lot worse in the past <laughs> on this mid-year budget review. So any more comments by council members? Go ahead, uh, council member Martinez. Yeah, nothing very insightful, just uh, fantastic. I'm really excited to see that we're, uh, we have a very well-balanced budget and it seems like our departments are are being taken care of, and we have projected a healthy fiscal rest of the year. So thank you for putting this together for us so that we could see what's going on. And I'm excited that we are continuing to recover very well from COVID and uh, any anticipated uh, financial problems uh, I really just don't see on the horizon anymore so thank you okay any com any more comments and I would just reflect yeah the, the numbers look good but my concern these days is making sure we have the sufficient staffing levels uh, so uh, some departments are doing good from staffing others are are lacking and uh, I don't know you fix that with more money at it or I think there's other issues going on our economy and the job market, that uh, creates a, a greater challenge. Obviously, we have the great resignation. One reason why we have inflation is because a lot of companies are raising their salaries to, to hire people and because, they're, because they don't have enough candidates for positions in many, of the, many different industries. So that's the thing that bothers me is making sure we have not just st uh, bodies, but qualified bodies. And that's, it's easy to find the bodies, it's hard to find the qualified bodies. Right, Marsha? <laughs> so, all right, so do we have a motion?
Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I approve. I'll it. second it. Okay. All right, moved by uh, Councilmember Johnson, and I believe uh, Councilmember uh, Mayor Pro Tem Johnson moved, and Councilmember Rue second. And just we'll do electronic vote. We do have someone on Zoom who wants to comment. I don't know if you want to take their comment before the vote. Somebody on Zoom? Okay. Yeah. Let's, we'll do. I don't know if you can see the screen with the presentation All right. up. I don't, I don't have any screens here, so I can't see. Uh, okay. I don't know. I can't see any raised hands or anything. So we'll take public comment, and um, the public comment will, uh, will include the uh, public comment for the entire agenda. So go ahead, Bruce. You have five minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I, I think I, I uh, agree with a lot of what the comments of the council and then the and all, um, you know, this is a good uh, budget uh, review at this point in time. Uh, you know, it's good that, you know, I appreciate all of those uh, council members in attendance um, doing the work uh, to keep us um, informed and making sure that uh, staff are um, doing their part. And I appreciate all the staff, all the managers that I see there and, um, and all the staff at the city doing, you know, going above and beyond every single day uh, to run this city. It's a hard thing. The more I learn about uh, all this stuff, the, the harder it seems to be that you guys can keep this stuff going day in and day out, obviously. And, um, you know, my biggest numbers that I saw out there that seemed you know, alarming to me were the overtime budgets, and, which means, um, you know, I thought that meant a lot of understaffed uh, positions. I, and I don't know if staffing that will change the um, overtime amounts or not, but um, hopefully we can get... Uh, fully staffed positions. Um, and then the only thing, other thing that concerned me was the um, the attorney, city attorney uh, budget seemed to be excessive. And I was wondering if that had anything to do with the, um, you know, sexual harassment claims against the city. And that sure would be nice to know more detail about the city attorney's budget and why that's a little out of whack, but uh, I don't probably not gonna get any answers today. But anyways, great job, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, having these meetings and listening and, and understanding the budget better. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Bruce. All right. I don't see anybody else that wishes to speak from the public on Zoom, and I don't think anybody in the audience wants to speak. No? Okay. Let's vote. Okay. So, uh, passed uh, 4-0, and so with that, we're adjourned.